morning guys um i'm gonna talk today a little bit about well i'm gonna say some things about what the lord's been dealing with me and it may be multi-packed um just because i need to get a lot of this out there but there's gonna be other messages just watch them it's nothing to do with me guys and everything to do with him that's where i'm at but we have an advocate with God that's ever before the throne of grace and glory. And his name would be Jesus. That was God's whole plan. His son, the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. So what are we concerned about, worried about, stressed about when we have so much it's part of the message, so just bear with me. Yes, it might seem all over the map, but it's not. I'm not all over the reservation. It's just a lot. Okay, that's just where I'm at. And what God's doing in my life with the things he's showing me. But one of the things he's been telling me over a period of a couple of weeks is this outpouring is going to be birthed in prayer. Prayer, preparation, planning, and provision. <clears throat> and it's all biblical, guys. But what I'm saying is that prayer piece is because it's a communication with him. Because what I'm telling you is not, is not look to me, YouTube, Facebook, this person. That, and there's a lot of different prophetic people out there. And a lot of claims to fame and all this, you know, just. Some of it can be more distractions. What I'm saying is that quiet, secret place that you, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word, because it's there, guys, for the taking and for the asking and for the just coming before, because He wants to walk with you in the cool of the day. Okay? So that's key to this. Not the election, not Donald Trump. Not Joe Biden, not who you voted for or who you didn't, not your opinion. That's another distraction, guys. It's not going to win the day. Yes, I know it's in two days. I'm not saying, you know, I, I don't even want to go down there because that's not part of this message. <clears throat> it's part of other messages, but <clears throat> it's distractive. <clears throat> From what he's trying to show us, guys, <clears throat> and it's all in the spirit. So pray, seek him, because we have an advocate. He's working on our behalf. <clears throat> There's way too much of the sensationalism. I saw this, I saw that, the Lord told me this, the Lord told me that. Well, guess what? What I'm telling you, Is what he's telling me. But he's also wanting to tell you. And I, there's probably plenty that he shared with you guys. And girls. Or gals. Or ladies. Um, because we're all his children. We all have. The same. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost and his word. And this is one of the things he showed me. My wife and I were praying a couple of weeks ago. There's many multiple layers to this. I probably need to just use this as a message. But it's about a place of fire. And it was our fireplace. And there's some real, for me, there's some real prophetic stuff in that. And I'll leave it at that for right now. But how that place of fire was our heart. He wants to dwell. And that purging, <clears throat> cleansing, purif purifying fire. And I was praying over it. My wife and I were praying through the house because it seemed like all hell was kind of breaking loose in just different areas. And so we were just really purging our house. And a lot we're praying for, but it was just like, okay, it's just, this is something we need to do. And we've been doing it, but it was just, there was an urgency at that particular time and day. And the Lord, I 
behind the dark fireplace. So I walked over there, put my, both my hands on there. <clears throat> <clears throat> and the, the, what my wife had, we're real big on thanks, Thanksgiving. She is. Because um, it's very special to her. To me, too. But really, it is to the Lord, too, because he wants us to have a thankful, grateful heart. Prayerful. Come before him with thanksgiving and praise. But as I spread my arms out and touched both sides of the fireplace, I saw the, you know, the things that she put out to decorate. It was amongst the three crosses that she has up there and stuff. It wasn't gaudy and it wasn't a bunch of really, it wasn't Halloween stuff or anything, nothing to do with that. It was just the thanksgiving. And the Lord told me, he said, you know, he said, we preach, teach, Tell people about the goodness. Tell them he's ever, you know, such a tale before, ever present in our, against our enemies. We tell all the goodness of God. We tell people all about God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, his word, how good he is. Everything he wants to do for people. We're busy running to the homeless or to the church or to the sensationalism of the, you know, Honestly, I'm just going to say this, but the sensationalism of all the music and the band, well, it's like, man, some, you know, it's two hours of, you know, this is worship music, some dude on a guitar and the keyboards and the, you know, I don't see a lot of Jesus in there. I don't see a lot of the blood of the lamb. I don't see a lot of the word. I don't see a lot of God. I don't see much of anything. Sorry. I just don't. Could be wrong, guys. Maybe that's just my soapbox, but we've got to get back to this place of fire. And what the Lord told me was, he said, many of us are preaching and teaching and just out there just blowing and going because the enemy's using that. Guys, Some a lot of the sensationalism, everybody wants to be at the White House and pray for the president and just, and just they're Name to fame and claim to fame. A little serious, I get it, but we all have mantles, yes. But this is what he told me. He said, well, tell all this, blast this out, the gospel out, but we won't come to the table ourselves because we don't think we're worthy. Because there's so much of this orphan heart not just an orphan heart, but it's just this disconnect. We don't think we're worthy. So we don't to partake of what the table that the Lord spread before us. I'm telling you guys, that's where you're gonna you're gonna that's what he wants you to do. Get this in prayer. Nothing to do with me. What's he telling you? Showing you. That's where I'm going with this. I'm just directing you to him. I gotta do it too. I got to get closer to him too. I got to do the exact same thing. This is not, you know, you do this and then I'll do something else. I'm better, you know, all this better than him and tell, man. There's a lot to the humble piece in it and it's not humble pie. Saul, when he was Paul, I mean, Saul became Paul. Oh, when he was Saul. Man. God did a lot for that man. And he was always trying to stay humble. Peter had an attitude. Till God knocked, knocked the snot out of him. Took, it, took, poke, cut, took him out. He cried and wept after he denied Christ three times. He wants us, you know, to humble ourselves, but instead we want to sensationalize it. The Holy Ghost is moving. It's it's a revival over here. It's a movement over there. It's a come to come to this church, bright light, shiny. Guys, I'm just gonna kind of. This is real simple, but yet it's not. We don't even need a stage in a church, honestly. Platform to be above people subliminal in a roundabout way yes it is guys honestly 
For what? Think about it, you know, but I know that's another distraction. I'm not trying to be distracted. I'm trying to say, hey, you know what? Get on your knees before the Lord. And I'm telling you 5 a.m. because that's what he told me. Because that starts the day. And if we all do it, or a lot of us do it, or enough of us do it, as a nation, as a people, things are going to change. Because it's not about who you vote for to, in what, tomorrow, or, yeah. Because today's, yeah, it's tomorrow. Today's 11 too. So it's tomorrow. <clears throat> not about your vote, it's about your prayer. Honestly, guys, your voice isn't being heard anyhow in a lot of, in a lot of areas in the vote. People have twisted it up so much. All this mail and stuff, talking about lawyers, it, man, it's gotten polluted and diluted and twisted and it, man, it'll wear your brain out. If you still got one. Because it's what the enemy is using as a distractive force. You don't think so? Started in the Garden of Eden. Everything was set before him. Man, they had splendor and a life. And they could do whatever they wanted. And they just, he just wanted to talk with them in the cool of the day. And he only gave them one thing. Don't eat from this one tree. Pretty much. So what did the devil do? Zeroed in on that. Did God really say that? Man, that's what he's doing today, guys. No different. Deceptive, twisted, because his main goal is to, to steal, kill, and destroy. And you know what? And, and that's, you know... This election is about a space and time that God wants to give us of grace. And, and if he has to use Donald Trump, so be it. Because he's sure not going to use Biden. Because that's going to just, I'm telling you, there's more to it than that. They don't even want him in there, honestly. There's, I can name names and you can read between the lines. There's a, there's a, Demonic plot behind that to muddy it up so bad. I reposted him. I'm thinking from Jeremiah Johnson, and he's a little bit, you know, he's big, big on the Trump side of it. Okay, so let's set that aside. But what he's saying is very, very true about the abortion about the gay rights but what I'm saying is why all this sexually deviant stuff okay abortion you're taking a baby's life you don't have a right to take a life you don't have any right we're not God but yeah we claim to be and we just man if it's that good of a thing then take me to a clinic at eight or nine months and let's walk us through one with cameras lights cameras action no, you won't. I'm not trying to be gory and graphic. You know what's wrong, guys. Not only are we taking a life, we're doing it in a heinous way. <clears throat> okay, that's one. Okay, the gay rights issue. It's all about sex with anybody. Well, can, can a, a man and a man or a woman and a woman, can they... Produce birth? No, it's about the lust of the flesh. The feel good, do whatever you want. Sex with anything, okay? I mean, we can get into some pretty nasty, vulgar stuff, and I'm not going to. <clears throat> I'm sorry, that's even coming up. The pedophilism, all rampant, all the stuff in Hollywood, all the things that people have said, even if there's partial truth to some of it, or even if it's all true, mess the human sex trafficking it's a mess it's all designed to steal kill and destroy but what 
God's image of walking this earth. I'm going to end with this. Well, no, I need to stay on this for just a second. So it's all this sexually deviant stuff. It's gotten worse. I'm not a kid, teenager, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You know, and we've been desensitized to it, and now we think everything's okay, but it's all the lust. It's all what we want to do. It's all the selfishness, and it's just the God of self, honestly. A lot of it. Because it was created pro for procreation. It's an anointed, appointed thing from God, but we've let the enemy twist it into something it's not, and everything's dirty about it. <clears throat> okay? So, but <clears throat> this just happened. My wife and I were talking last night, but I, this is a message too, but it's about a diamond. The Lord showed me about a diamond and how the things that we think we're doing for the Lord and we go out and do something, it's multifaceted. He's got several purposes to it, more than one. And it's just this bigger, larger picture, bigger, larger picture that he's orchestrated, the diamond. And if you take a diamond and you turn it in light, it's brilliant. Turn it again, it's, what do they call it, facets? You can correct me if I'm wrong, but you know what I'm saying, the different, you know, it's brilliant. Well, that's what God does. My wife last night just went to the store. She wanted to, he did some things and she wanted to do a little shopping and just kind of get her mind off of things, which she needed to because just, like I said, the enemy's out there distracting and plaguing us in our brain. Us, I said, I didn't say my wife. I said, all of us, you guys too. So I was, you know, nothing serious. She just needed some stuff and it was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna take her. I said, well, just take your time because she likes to do that. And it's, in some ways it's kind of therapeutic, honestly, to her. And, you know, and it's like, get your, you know, and she came back. Mostly what God did, she got some really good bar. My wife was very frugal. She got some really good barbies. She got some stuff she needed and wanted and just, you know, kind of tailor-made and it was inexpensive and she likes that. We all do. <clears throat> but what he really did was she prayed for homeless guy and while she was praying for some homeless guy, this guy, a construction guy pulled up in a truck Pray for me. I overheard it because my wife's very, very vocal. You know what? There's that diamond, guys. We think we're going to do one thing or we got to go to the left instead of the right. We want to go to the straight instead of then we go back. You know, I'm saying that, but that's back to where I started with this about the prayer and the direction. And we're not going to know it if we're not talking to them, communicating with them, laying ourselves before them. Raw. God, I got issues, problems, whatever. But I'm bringing them to you. But it's not to get a laundry list and say, hey, I need you to help me fix this, this, and this. It's more of, hey, God, here I am. I would need some direction in my life. And then it becomes that diamond. His will, his purpose, his plan. But we were talking last night, I told her that, and I said, but I said, but honey, I said, that diamond's brilliant and you know the facets and I said, but it takes a light to show up the facets, to show off the brilliance. So we want to be the light of the world. Got to let them in, guys. And you're going to let them in through your prayer life. Not through watching me on YouTube or some other Yahoo on Facebook or whatever, you know. And there's some good stuff out there. But there's also some not so good stuff out there, guys. That's the other part of the direction. It's a protection. It said, be anxious for nothing. He'll give you the peace that will pass all understanding. He'll guard your heart and mind. Not if we're not praying and listening, guys. 
we. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. Said we want to bark about all the different garbage that's going on all around us. And right now, the biggest one is the votes in the country and the direction that we're heading. Not good. I get that. But God is good. His grace is sufficient. The blood of the Lamb is sufficient. So it's time to pray, guys. Seek Him for direction. What's He telling you to do? Me, it was the YouTube thing. YouTube's trying to ban me on different things. I mean, I'm the comments, posts, they're just nefariously doing it, honestly. Facebook is really bad about it. I'm not saying that I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying I have to have Facebook as a platform because it's just, my platform is wherever the Lord sends me. He just told me to use it. But I posted some stuff and when I hit the abortion issue, and when I hit the wrong candidate issue with the abortion issue, barred, banned, cut off. But they don't give me a notification hardly of it even. They just say I can't do it. Because because I used to repost that. Say that you know, that they tell me it was against community standards and they're hiding in plain sight, guys, even to Congress. Let's get real here. <clears throat> But that's one of my messages out there, wizards that peep and mutter. Why do they want the mail-in votes? Why do they want all the stuff electronic? Why are people saying they don't trust it and all that? It's so that they can channel that information, try to figure out things of the spirit, which they can't. Today, First John, I don't know if I said this, this was the scripture. First John 2 and 1, about the advocate, read that. But the other one was um, First Peter, I believe, it's about a royal priesthood. That was a scripture for the day, how our royal priesthood are peculiar people. <laughs> Love you guys. Um, pray. And let's usher in this Holy Ghost outpouring that God wants to do. Through all of us, whether you're homeless or, or a multimillionaire, whether you're in the penthouse or living under the outhouse, whether you're victorious and glorious or defeated and your hands are hanging low, God is God and he sent his son I'm going to end with this because this has been a 40 year journey for me it's time that us older Christians lose this attitude and it's very biblical Matthew 20 called everybody a labor in the field but the end of it when he paid everybody it says so that he paid the you know, people that did nothing, didn't deserve anything, honestly, paid them. Then we got to the people that worked, toiled, labored. Oh, that's what it says in the Bible. It says, those that labored and toiled in the sun all day long. When they got to Jesus, this is my version of it, I'm, they copped an attitude. He said, friend, where's the evil in your heart? Didn't you agree to work for a Daenerys? <clears throat> Isn't it mine to give? Go your way. Get away from me, don't. Oh, and don't sin no more type. <clears throat> it's time for us to lose our attitude. <clears throat> and just be about our father's business. It's just a timing thing, guys, okay? So we've worked a little bit more than somebody else or whatever. Does that make us more worthy? No, that's the works. That's the Martha, Martha mentality that's just... It becomes, starts going down in, you know, in the fleshly demonic realm. What we did. What did he do? You just have to, you know, be obedient. And, you you know, you can peel a lot of the stuff off by the prayer and the direction because a lot of this nonsense will go away in your life. If you're directed by him. Mine too. 
Okay, I'm not perfect, okay, guys? I say some, I have to really watch what I say, but sometimes I say some stuff, and it's like, man, Lord, okay. Or sometimes I do stuff, or sometimes I end up in the wrong place. 90% or whatever, I don't know what the percentage is, is a no. I'm in the right place. I'm following the Lord. I'm about my Father's business. But there's times when it's like, man, Lord, it's me. It's me, oh, Lord, standing in need of prayer. There's times when I need to humble myself. There's times when I need to repent. Come before the throne. Get some redirection. I will end with this. My wife and I were come hauling butt through Arkansas on 30, coming home to Dallas. We knew the way. It's 30. I'll send my GPS. We had the GPS on, but we didn't really need it. But we knew the way. We're on 30. The 30 goes straight right into Dallas. No problems, no issues. Just stay on the highway. GPS comes on and says, take, you know, some goofy exit, FM, whatever, 297, whatever road it was. It was a goofy, and I looked at my wife, and I'm like, no, we know the way. It's 30. We both said, no, we know the way. It's 30. No, we know the way. It's 30. So we get past the exit just a little bit. It's a huge 10-mile wreck. The GPS was trying to redirect us, but this is what God did. We made a mistake. We didn't listen. Ignored the direction but there was another exit it was up about a half a mile and I had to go down you know but veer off and go down on the side of the road and people were looking at me but I got there I just you know was in the gravel I was like man I'm not gonna wait an hour to get this half a mile we were tired I wanted to come home long trip and there was another exit and we followed the gps and got around the wreck god's gps god promised his son god plans was salvation so many things so that's what he wants to do is direct us but he wants to direct us in prayer and the reason why 5 a.m quiet nobody's up not even well my dog that's about it Not that my wife is bad or anything like that. I mean, we pray together a lot. It's just, this is a personal thing. Hers too. She likes to pray by herself too. She's got her own special place in the house where she prays in mine too. And we like our quiet, alone time with God. And we like our together time with God. And we like to pray together. And we like to, just, it's all encompassing. But what I'm saying is, he wants you to come to the throne. He wants you to come to the table, and we are worthy. So, love you guys. Um, see you soon.